Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. I'm with Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's continuous wall-to-wall -wall coverage of VMworld 2013. We're here back at the Moscone Center. We're in Moscone South. At the street level, come on and see us. Just turn right in the lobby and you can't miss us. And uh, really appreciate VMware. They built a beautiful set for us. Hugh Yoshida is here. He's the CTO of Hitachi Data Systems, somebody I've known for a number of years. Hugh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, Dave. Glad to be here. Yeah, good to see yeah. you. Appreciate you coming on. And uh, this is the the tenth. It's not my tenth VM World. I don't know if it's your tenth, but uh, I've been to a lot of them. I think I lost lost track. But um, a lot of energy, a lot of action. You know, what are your general thoughts on the on the show? Well, I mean, uh, what, what over 22, 23,000 people. It's quite a amazing, uh, and it just shows the penetration of virtualization and the benefits that it provides customers, otherwise they wouldn't be here. I mean, you've seen yeah. that, you know, the, the impact that virtualization has had on, on your customer base. Um, you know, you saw it all the way through. Uh, were, you, were you a skeptic at first? Um, were, were you, you know, super enthusiastic? Were you, let's uh, wait and see? Maybe take, us, take us back to the early days of virtualization. What were you thinking about at the time, and, and did you ever envision it would be, you know, this much of an impact? No, I mean, virtualization, I mean, that's where we had to go. I mean, we had to, to separate that infrastructure from the application and data. You know, we couldn't keep that you know, tight connection. So virtualization enables us to do that. So we can make changes, refresh to the technology, and, and we still, uh, without disrupting the application. So it was a key uh, moment in, in IT history. Which, of course, the, in, the industry had done before. I mean, Hitachi was a mainframe supplier mm -hmm. for many years. Right. And of course, IBM had virtualized it. But then the industry kind of forgot about it. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then, you know, the whole open systems trend. And then, hey, VMware had this new idea. Like, it, it, it you know, had never been invented. But it's really the way they applied it, the way they built an ecosystem around it. And, of course, yeah. Hitachi's part of that ecosystem. So maybe talk a little bit about your relationship with with, with VMware, what are you guys doing? Right, there? we've had a, over a 10 year relationship with VMware, one of the early uh, implementers, especially with our virtualization technology. We're the first to be able to virtualize storage and be able to integrate with things like uh, VAI, the uh, integration with their APIs. So we have, we are also now an early uh, uh, design uh, uh, partner with them so that we are now not just uh, looking for things to integrate with, but are really involved in the design with them. Okay, so we hear a lot about cloud this week, you know, hybrid clouds and, and mm -hmm. even a little bit about public cloud. So what, what's your, what's Hitachi's take on, on cloud, private cloud or, or otherwise, and, and maybe talk a little bit about what you're doing there. Yeah, private cloud is transformational. I mean, it's taking that old uh, IT organization where you're putting together things, uh, do, it, do it yourself type of approach to more of an automated, consolidated approach. The key to that is the virtualization. It's not just the virtualization of the servers, but all the way through the stack, server network, and, uh, and then the management to be able to set policies and run that as, as a service. So you talk about um, VAI and, and VASA. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we, we, when I first came to, to VMworld, I said, oh wow, this is really going to have a negative effect on storage, right? Uh -huh. Now you guys were virtualizing storage at the time, so you're sort of a, 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 maybe ahead a of the game in that regard, but virtualization really stressed storage a lot, and a, and a lot of the integration, you know, the, the <coughs> APIs that, that mm -hmm. VMware announced were kind of designed to minimize the, the penalties associated with spinning disks. So I want to ask you a question around Flash. You've got a deep technology background, you've been covering this a long time. It's, I almost feel like, and I wonder if I could test this premise with you, a lot of those integrations that, like I guess, say, were designed to deal with spinning disk go away when you get things like all flash arrays. The integration points you know, re relative to flash become a lot smaller. Is that a viable premise, and how does integration change as flash becomes more prominent? Okay, it, it, you know, flash is, um, well, uh, first of all, you know, the, the hard disk technology has slowed down. You know, for the last 50 years. It's gone backwards, right? Yeah, yeah it, we used yeah. to have a price erosion of about 30% per year because we're doubling the bit densities. 
and uh, that has slowed down. You know, and if we look to the future, that price erosion is going to be something less than 20 percent. And everything we do to add capacity to that disk is going to make it slower and slower. So flash is going to be required, or non-volatile memory, as I, I want to call it, to be able to be that top tier so that everybody gets that high performance, and yet the, the disk can still be there to maintain the capacity. Disk can do what they do best, which is give us low cost capacity, but the flash has to be there to give us the performance. And it has to be in a tiered environment, and that requires automation, that requires the virtualization, that requires this um, uh, software-defined data center as uh, VMware is defining it. Yes, yeah, so John Furrier and I talk, talk about these disrupt disruptions all the time, John, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I mean, disruption is, is the key. One of the things we were talking about earlier today mm -hmm. was, um, should IT reward disruptors or sustainers? Sustainers being the ones holding on to the old and the disruptors, and so it's balance between having disruption. Um, and, I, and one of the areas that are being disrupted right now is obviously the compute side, obviously uh, with compute storage and networking all going software, they're actually mm -hmm. software defined, um, that's a big area. So I want to ask you specifically on the unified compute, you guys yes. announced here at the show your unified compute platform for mm -hmm. vSphere. Right. What is that about? What is unified compute? What does that mean? Okay, it's, it's taking server storage and network, it's taking the infrastructure pieces and then being able to integrate them and then be able to present it through a software-defined interface like a vCenter, okay? We've taken an approach that's different from other, any other vendors that has helped us to become more integrated with that software-defined data center. Instead of trying to manage VMware through APIs, we provide all our management objects to vCenter. So you don't have to see any of our element managers. You can manage, provision, everything through the vCenter interface. That's unique, I think if you go to any of the booths here at uh, this convention, you'll see that we're the most closely integrated of all the uh, vendors. With our own servers, our own storage, and our partnership with our switch vendors. All Brocades. through vCenter, so I don't all have to, I, one single pane of glass, I'm the I'm VMware customer. Right. I can provision, manage, store, all that right. stuff through vCenter. Right, and since we make this open through uh, RESTful APIs to vCenter, uh, it's also going to be available to other types of hypervisors, okay? But it also enables us to uh, leverage future uh, functions from uh, VMware, like vCloud, for instance, okay? So that they can bring in new functions and they don't have to change any of the infrastructure underneath it. So we had Jerry Chen on from Greylock, obviously mm -hmm. they're an investor, and you know, some will argue they you know, don't have as much vision of the guys building products like you guys. Uh, they make the bets on the startups. So I got to ask you the same question I asked him, which is, if software-defined data center continues to track on the way it's tracking, the disruption will be a different look of IT. Mm -hmm. um, so this vCenter is, is an interesting angle because then you say, okay, that is kind of the, the Amazon-like experience. So mm -hmm. are customers looking for it to be more like Amazon or is Amazon looking to be more like enterprise? Is it a, what we call the dog and the cat? Which is, depending on which animal you look at, it's a different uh -huh. view. But what, in your opinion, does the software-defined data center truly disrupt for the IT guys? And, and how big will that be in your mind? Okay, it makes it simpler. It simplifies the environment. They don't have to do it yourself. And every new function that comes in, uh, they don't have to go down deep dive into the elements, okay? W the way we provide it through, through our interfaces, using the APIs and just opening our objects up to uh, the uh, hypervisor, they're able to add functions without having to go deep dive. So it's going to be uh, much simpler for uh, our users, much easier to transition to new technologies in the future. So how does that affect, uh, Hugh, the, the hardware business? So you've got all this hard, this, this mm -hmm. software function today embedded in, a, in an array controller. Uh -huh. you know, software defined seems to be trying to pull that out. Um, so so is, that, is that correct? What does that mean for uh, a company that makes a lot of money in, in hardware? And how do you, you know, where are the white spaces now? How do they shift? Well, actually, you know, Software-defined data center doesn't mean that we have commodity hardware, commodity infrastructure. That infrastructure has to be much more smarter, have much more functions to be able to support that. I think, from my viewpoint, the hardware, the intelligent hardware, enables the software-defined data center. Okay, uh, an example I use is, you know, no matter how much software you, you have, you can't take a Mini Cooper and make it like an Escalade or a Porsche. Okay, it has different functions. So you have to have the storage system that are be able to work to those interfaces, provide that dynamic provisioning, provide that flash optimization, the performance of optimization, or the capacity optimization. 
but that hardware has to have that capability to do that. And that's why hardware that's differentiated in their functionality is going to be more important moving forward. You know, when VMware first came, uh, they said they could, you know, they could, you could do thin provisioning. Okay, that's, that's very useful for optimizing storage utiliz utilization. But when they did that, they had to use their cycles. They couldn't, you know, so they have the same problem everybody else has. There's more and more applications, more cycles being needed by the applications. So they offload that to the storage through APIs, and then we're able to do that thin provisioning. They want to do SCSI reserves, we do that for them. They want to do vMotion, we move the data for them. So this combination, this integration between VMware and the hardware is what really makes that software-defined data center. And that intelligent, more intelligence or more requirements are being pushed down into the hardware. Excellent, so uh, my last question here was, so as a technologist, uh, you look out, you got to break out the telescope or maybe at least the binoculars. Yeah. What's really exciting you now on, on the horizon that you see? Well, this, this whole approach about uh, the information cloud, you know, as, as VMware uh, moves to the cloud, as we uh, are able to share resources, share applications across the public and private cloud, that's going to be really transformational, okay? So today there's some reluctance to put core applications into, into the public cloud. Okay. Uh, so we can still have, there's a need for the private cloud as well. But to be able to get information from the public cloud integrated with what we have in the core uh, private cloud, that's, that's where we can get more of the information that we need to be able to be more productive in our businesses. Excellent. All right, Hugh Yoshida, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Really, pleasure seeing you as Good always. Good All yes. right, yeah. keep it right there everybody. John Furrier and I will be back with our next guest. We're live from VMworld 23, 2013. This is theCUBE. <laughs>